Well, according to LinkedIn, a quarter of remote workers do not plan to return to the office when it reopens. So how do you go about telling your boss? We've got Yahoo Finance's Sibyl Marcellus here to tell us in the latest installment of Career Control. Remote work has its advantages and many workers are not willing to give those up. Just 34% of remote workers who were asked to return to the office accepted and are prepared to do so. So what happens with many companies planning to return to the office in just a matter of weeks. How do you navigate this? Let's turn to executive coach and best-selling author, Margie Worrell. Now, Margie, some workers want to be back, others don't. For those who don't, what should they tell their boss if they don't want to return to the office? Firstly, I think it's important to approach this with a collaborative attitude and put yourself in your boss's shoes or, you know, the people who are running your organization and think, well, what would their concerns be about me not coming back? Because oft, often we, we get very focused on our own needs, our own wants and desires, and we need to be thinking about, well, what's, where's there a win-win here and where do I need to approach this in a way where we can find a path that will make them feel like the business needs are being met while the employee needs are also being taken care of. Remote workers are clearly aware of the advantages of working from home, such as a flexible schedule, more time with friends and family instead of being stuck on a train or a car commuting. But what are they missing out on by not being in the office? Well, you know, we human beings have a need for connection and we connect best when we are connecting and we're able to read each other's body language, we're able to have those sort of spontaneous conversations. And so that, that, that those opportunities to have those water cooler conversations, to build camaraderie, to have those, sometimes those more heated conversations where you might be debating about the best path forward. It is more difficult to create the environment for those very crucial conversations to occur. And from a cult, through a cultural lens, it's more, more challenging. There are different challenges and more complex challenges to creating a culture that, that really sets everybody up to do their best work and to work with each other in the most optimal way. There are many reasons, as you mentioned, why employers want workers back in the office, but 60% of them are saying that the popularity of remote work is making it harder to retain or attract workers. So will companies who refuse to offer hybrid or fully remote work end up losing out? Absolutely. Uh it's all about agility, right? We, are, we have gone through an incredible change. You might say we've gone through 10 years, 20 years of change in the space of 18 months. Organisations that are operating from the old paradigm are going to get left behind. They're going to miss out on good people. They need to adapt to, to whatever new norms emerge from this. And the new norms will absolutely include more hybrid work models, whether that's two days a week, whether that's particular days of the week or a certain number of days a month. But there is no doubt at all that organisations that aren't going to offer more flexibility are not going to attract and they're certainly also not going to retain their top talent. We're seeing this trend in Silicon Valley of pay cuts for workers who want to be permanently remote. Google has actually offered their employees a calculator to see if they choose to work long-term remote, how that's going to affect their pay. Now, is this a strategy to get workers in the office and will it work? Look, obviously it, it, it's, it's an experiment, right? I mean, Google's all about experimenting. So we're gonna figure that out. The ability to live somewhere that is a lot less expensive than say Silicon Valley um, is going to mean that many people can save a lot of money on their, their cost of living, depending on where they wanna live. But of course, there's also cost to having a home office. Um, so so I, I think we're going to see whether or not this incentivizes people to go into the office. It may well do that. But I, I, I honestly, I think time's going to tell as, as also I think people who don't go back to the office are going to be at a disadvantage from career progression, from de developmental opportunities. I think they're going to get passed over for things that those who are showing up every day and putting in FaceTime, or even not every day, but regularly, that are going to get uh, more opportunities because they're there building those relationships, building trust. So I think there's a whole lot of factors that are going to weigh into where people ultimately decide to work and how often they may decide to show up.
Your new book, Stop Playing Safe, is out next month. We're still in the middle of a pandemic. How do you suggest people put themselves <laughs> out there in these conditions? Yeah, well, it's easy to just be focused on all of the risks. And this pandemic has absolutely magnified our sensitivity to risk. It's driven people to be very, very cautious. But in the midst of all this disruption is also a lot of opportunity. And so we have to be discerning about which risks we need to avoid and you know where we need to play it safe, but also where we need to put ourselves out there. And maybe that means take, making a, a change in job, a career, putting our hand up, going after something bigger. So I think we have to be careful not to miss out on the many opportunities that are going to emerge. You think of the roaring 20s that happened in the last century. I absolutely believe there'll be enormous opportunities that will emerge over the next six, 12 months, two, three years. But we have to be willing to take a risk and not play too safely. Uh, definitely important to stay open to opportunities. Marky Worrell, thanks so much. My pleasure. All right. Thanks so much, Sabil, for bringing us that conversation in the latest installment of Career Control.